welcome to Moments with Marianne. This is your host, Marianne Pastana. And our special guest today is Alexandra Wenman. And she's here to share with us her new book, Archangel Alchemy Healing, The Celestial Science in the Vibration of the Universe. So welcome to the show, Alexandra. Thank you for having me, Marianne. It's so wonderful to be on your show. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for being here. I mean, what an honor it is to have you here to talk about your new book. What inspired you to write this? Well, this book was actually probably about 12 or 13 years in the birthing. Uh, I was sort of channeling the information and researching the the sciencey bits for many, many years. And uh, and then it all came together in a culmination. It was just the right time, I think. It was one of those things where divine timing was definitely at work in my life. Well, let's talk about your background a little bit because, I mean, this is a channeled book, right? So when did that start to happen for you? For me, uh, my connection with angels and receiving messages and um, kind of visions of them and experiences with them started when I was a really young child. I uh, I think it's because I I actually died at birth and um my my parents were told that there was no chance I was going to survive they were awaiting a stillborn and um from being very very young obviously I was high forceped <laughs> out of the birth canal and resuscitated and miraculously brought back to life but from a very very young age I had very strong visions I could see um I could see faces in the dark. I could see all kinds of things, um, light and dark. I could see all all kinds of all, all, all ends of the spectrum, I guess. But the one thing that um, would always help me in those moments were the angels. I would ha- always had a very strong connection to the angels. I don't know if that was always there from birth, or if it was because my mother was uh, Catholic. And she taught me an an angel prayer when I was very young. But it always seemed to be the archangels that would connect with me uh, when I when I sort of learnt who it was later in life. It was always the archangels that were there. They were sort of ever present, if you will. And I didn't really know that I was channeling. I just kind of thought it was normal. (laughs) I used to write poetry from a very, very young age, and I would more hear it than than make it up. It would just kind of flow through me, and I still do it now. And then it was, uh, I guess I was in my 20s, and I didn't really know how to sort of sit and channel publicly, if you will, except that a friend of mine who was another angel healer had invited me on one of her angel workshops because I was writing a... a, I was editor of a a spiritual magazine called Prediction here in the UK for many years. So I went along to cover her workshop and halfway through the workshop without even asking me, (laughs) she said, right, Al, you're going to come and sit in this chair and uh, you're going to channel for us. And she literally, it was sink or swim. She put me on the spot. And in that moment, I realized that what I had actually been doing for years and years and years was channeling and once the door was open and once I'd realized that was what was happening, um, they then came in and they said, will you will you write about us? Will you work with us? Um, and they showed me visions of books that I was going to be writing and creating, and they showed that to other, other channels as well that I've uh, consulted over the years. So this really is um, the first book, I think, in a number, but uh, obviously I have some oracle decks and things, but this book is – the healing system that they channeled to me. So I call it angelic technology, really. They, they speak to me in, in language like you and I, obviously they speak to you in your own language, but they also talk to me in sound, in frequency. They've always spoken to me in symbol and very much before I even uh, knew anything about sacred geometry, they taught it to me. And it was, I sort of did everything backwards. The angels and the, and the guides would, t- would teach me something. And it would be before I'd even picked up a book on it. And I, and I really believe that this is because it was housed somewhere in my own ancient memory. It was in my DNA. It was probably in my other lifetimes um, that I had the, this memory of working with these technologies, perhaps. I don't know. Or it could have been completely new. But I would always then find the information afterwards that would back up what they had told me. And that was really why I wanted this book to be a bridging of the science and the spiritual, because to me, I, you know, like everybody, 
we need evidence. Our logical brain wants evidence. And when I teach channeling and when I talk about the angels, I always say that there's no better evidence than your own evidence, your own experience, because nobody can take that from you. And once you've had an experience, you can't unhave it, <laughs> you can't forget it, and you can't rationalize it. But it does help us to have some tangible evidence that can back up what we know or back up what we've experienced. And because I was never a scientist, I did come from a medical family. My dad's a doctor and my mother was a nurse. Um, but I uh, I never needed that kind of scientific evidence until I realized, well, you know, it's actually going to give my work a little bit more credit. It's going to give the angels a bit more credit. And there is scientific research out there. So I thought it was important to include it in the book because it does help people, I think. If you can translate what is happening on the spiritual into the logical, it balances both those worlds, which, of course, to me and my whole message is about bringing heaven to earth. So we need both, really. I think it's so just beautiful how it's written and put together because you're right. I mean, there are a lot of people out there who feel like, okay, I believe in the angels. I don't need anything else. And then other folks are like, okay, well, show me the science. Yeah. Yeah. I have been challenged on that over the years. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a funny thing. My my stock answer these days is uh, I can't prove it to you, but you can prove it to yourself. You can actually ask. And if you need the evidence, it, you'll be guided to it. So do you have certain archangels that you mostly work with? Do you work with all of them? How does that work? Uh, well, I've learned over the years that there is an infinite number of them. And even every time I think I, I, I have my, my team, there's always new ones stepping in. Um, often I'll have names come in that I've never heard before. And then I will soon discover, you know, often I can go to Google. Everyone's friend is Google. <laughs> and there will be you know, a lot of the time there will be something written about a certain archangel that has the name I've been told and I've started channeling. Sometimes there won't be. Um, but yeah, I do have the main ones. So obviously Metatron, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, uh, and I've written about 40 of them in the book, which actually goes with a, a card deck called the Archangel Fire Oracle, which is an alchemical journey through those 40 archangels as well. They sort of accompany each other. But these were the 40 that were channeled through to me to include in the book. I Honestly, I could have kept going and going and going. <laughs> so there must be another book coming pretty soon, I think. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're the sort of main ones. I often, with the actual healing system, there are six main archangels that overlight that system. And the people who've studied uh, like the Golden Dawn and the, the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram might be familiar with these angels because I have Raphael in the east, Michael in the south, Gabriel in the west, Uriel in the north, and then Metatron above, Sandalphon below. But I also have this incredible team of Elohim angels and these amazing throne angels that are very powerful protectors. They come in on a very dark blue-purple ray. And they hold the four corners of that healing space, obviously. And it, it all happens within a, a diamond healing chamber. So they gave me all of this geometry <laughs> and these kind of light codes, which uh, to me, it's very powerful. And these angels, you know, th there's only it, those ones holding the chamber in place are not the only ones that work through this system. It, it's, it's any angel or archangel, predominantly the archangels, to overlight the space. It, it's your higher self and your own angelic presence that is guiding the whole thing. Um, and uh, obviously any angel or even um, guides of light, other guides of light can come in and work through this. Ascended masters, um, beautiful celestial star beings, uh, gorgeous elementals, all, all of the, the beings and the guides who are working for our highest good are welcome to work with us through this system. But it's very much uh, overlit by those angels. I see the archangels really as part of our own consciousness as well. They they're, they're, they are separate guides, but from a multidimensional perspective, they really are the bridge in consciousness between us and the divine. And I do go into the mathematics of that in the back of the book as well. It, there's actual, I love it. It's so exciting because there's actual mathematical evidence that angels can exist. And I love that. I just love that. Well, now I think you've piqued a lot of interest from a lot of people. I mean, okay, well, wait a minute. 
there's a mathematical equation for this. I am into <laughs> this right now. You know, I don't claim to be a mathematician and I certainly don't claim to be a scientist. But when I started to dip a toe into some of this stuff, I found that there were a lot of books that were quite heavy, quite heavy in scientific language, quite heavy in mathematical language that I really found it tricky to wrap my, my brain around. And so one of the reasons I wanted to include this information in this book was to go some way to putting it into layman's terms so that anyone can understand it, really. I'm trying to make it like, you know, this really is a handbook for the ascension um, on many levels, and it's pretty much everything the angels have taught me to date. I, w- I wanted to put everything in there and I wanted it to be a practical tool. And uh, I, But I also wanted it to be understandable. And I haven't. I never, I, I never dumb down my language. If the angels talk to me in sort of ascension language, I think it's important to use the words that were channeled through. But I have tried to go some way to explain what's going on in normal, everyday, human, grounded, down to earth language. Exactly for that reason, bridging heaven to earth. Because if we don't understand something, how are we supposed to integrate it, work with it, digest it? and apply it to our daily waking lives. Like the whole point is we can work with these angels and apply their healing, apply their technology and apply their, their values and their, uh, their essence to our daily waking lives in a really grounded, practical, beautiful way. And essentially the whole purpose of this book is to help us become more angelic, more loving, more empowered in our daily waking lives. So hopefully the maths of it, is easy to understand and I and I haven't gone too into the the heavy language I have tried to simplify it as much as I can but still holding the essence of it well I think sometimes people really do appreciate having it go maybe a step a step above especially when you have people who have been in um, this you know the archangel community for some time they they have some basic understanding and they're looking to maybe level up on that yeah i uh i really tried in the writing of it not to be i didn't want to come in at sort of entry level spirituality and i didn't want to go over people's heads so when i was writing the book and channeling the processes i did have that intention please angels let this you know let everybody who needs this let it be kind of at the level they need it to be at. And I, I've actually, so far, I've had some really good feedback, actually. I think that this is a book for any level. You can come at it if you're a total beginner to angels and you've never worked with them before. You can certainly pick up this book and it will give you some insight. But also, I do go into things that many, many on this um, awakened path will be familiar with. I talk about um, twin flames, one flame, I talk about angelic light language. I talk about codes of light. I talk about multidimensional reality. And I actually think as a humanity, you know, there were a good few years ago, you couldn't really talk about topics like that. People would look at you like you were a complete weirdo and didn't know what you were talking about. But these days, if you say to someone, oh, yeah, we, we're living in a holographic universe, they just kind of nod and go, oh, yeah, I know what you mean. You know, most people kind of grasp those concepts these days. We're really rapidly awakening as a humanity, I find, which is amazing the acceleration is is really off the scale at the moment i understand that i mean 20 years ago they would have found a padded room for any of us that talked about this <laughs> yeah, <you know>? totally <laughs> <laughs> so thank goodness we're living in the age that we are where we can have open and free discussions about these things and because i think they make such a positive impact not only to humanity but to the planet as well your subtitle for the book is The Celestial Science in the Vibration of the Universe. Yeah. And so where does the vibrational part come into all this? I, I talk a lot about sound and frequency throughout the book. Um, frequency, some of the sounds that the archangels have shown me, you might know them as the angelic choirs. Uh, it really is a frequency. And when I started to have these immense experiences with the archangels, when uh, kind of, I suppose, for many years when I was a child, they were around and then I kind of went to Catholic school. I was told it was just my imagination, closed it all down. But after I moved to London, I started to have these very real, tangible, embodied experiences with archangels. And it started with Metatron. 
And Metatron, what happened was he stepped into my body and he merged with me. And in that moment, I was actually on a healing course, but it wasn't a healing course about angels. And they said, we never usually include this exercise, but we're going to do like five minutes of angel connection or something. And so we we sat down, we paired up, and I was actually doing a reading for another girl in the class. But I closed my eyes and immediately this being connected with me. And it was as though he showed me the whole multiverse. It was as though the room around me and my body sort of disappeared and I became the angel. He showed me sort of how do I even describe this? I don't really have words for it. I have written about it in the book, but I'll try to describe it as best I can. The angel and I became one and he was absolutely huge. So I was absolutely huge. I felt myself as this absolutely huge, angelic, golden being made up of all the ge- geometric shapes, a little bit like a, a, a he, he sort of reminded me of an angelic robot. And I was a fan of Transformers at the time. So when he told me his name was Metatron, I nearly fell off my chair because I thought, oh, that sounds like Megatron. And, you know, it was really interesting. But the thing, the thing about the frequency was I felt as though my body had been plugged into an electrical socket of love and it was rushing and vibrating and humming with this golden energy, this golden white energy of just the most ecstatic love, the most divine love. I could, I could never do it justice to describe it, but I can feel it almost now as I'm talking about it. It was like nothing I'd ever felt. And I'm very, very clairvoyant. So the visuals were off the scale. It was like being in some sort of virtual reality, incredible uh, experience where you know, this angel, I could see him from all angles and I was him. And there were planets so big, there were planets orbiting his head. And the the golden light was just sparkling and and it, it was it was electricity. That was the only way I can describe it. And years later, when I started to learn about Nikola Tesla and the electricity, the divine electricity that he had spoken about, I realized that this was possibly um one in the same thing, this divine electricity that we have access to the thing that actually animates us, that creates all life, that that powers everything, that is harmonious and beautiful. And it was the energy, the expression and the vibration of unconditional love, true unconditional love. And I had many other experiences after that. You know, there, there were other times when I channeled another healing system called Precious Wisdom Alchemy. And uh, on the morning I was given the attunement for it direct from spirit my heart opened multidimensionally and all I could see were all these hexagonal tunnels of golden light going off in every direction all around me. It was a little bit like uh, when you hold a mirror up opposite a mirror and you can see into infinity. I felt like that at every direction. And again, this love, this immense electricity of love, this humming, this frequency, this sound of love, it was it was sound and light and electricity, most divine, incredible experience, most amazing feeling of love. But when I looked through all of these tunnels, I could see all these beings of different kind of species and some angelic, some kind of human, some David, some star beings, multidimensionally, all these beings looking back at me. And I thought, oh gosh, they're all sending me love. I have to send love back. And I started to send love back. And in that moment, I realized, oh my goodness, they're all me. These are all aspects of me. And it was like I was being shown the one soul, the divine, the one soul of the divine. And what that meant was that we are all connected through this frequency, this network of pure love. So that's the frequency. The frequency, I can hear it with my clear audience. I I can feel it in my body as a tangible feeling. I can see it as light and as these angelic presence and um, beings and also in different shapes and tones and letters and sounds that are shown to me as the as what they call the codes of light Um, but I think for most humans I think for most people you will know it in your body you just know it as a feeling we're sentient beings before we're anything and you don't have to be super duper clairvoyant or clairaudient or really even that spiritually awakened to know the energy of love when you feel it. And for some of us, 
I find that when I start teaching about angels and I start sharing this frequency, people get really moved to tears because, you know, when you when you start to experience the unconditional love that the angelic realm bring you, there's a part of your humanness that might feel that you're not worthy of it or it's a love that goes beyond anything you've ever experienced. It really is otherworldly. So this frequency is amazing because it gets into our, our core cellular memory, into our DNA, and it is able to be harnessed for healing. That's the whole point of it. That's why they uh, they showed me it in this way. And in many ways, the geometries that we're working with are a way to direct this healing. And I see it, this diamond, this gold diamond frequency as a laser light of truth. So unconditional love really is that love without judgment. It's not good or bad. It's not right or wrong. It's not light or dark. It just is. It, it, it's, it's found in the patterns of nature. But when you can harness it and direct it with a positive intention for healing, for alchemy, you really can get to the core truth of a situation. And, I'm, and I've been teaching this work for a long time as part of other workshops, but it's now been certified as its own healing system. And I've, I've started teaching it and my students, it's blowing their minds. <laughs> and I've had, you know, I've actually got some students that are healers in their own right that have been doing energy work for years and years and years. And I have had this one person say to me, I've been doing, you know, all the Reiki's, all the energy healing, I've done so many courses, Atlantean healing, all these Ascension courses. And she said, I've never felt anything like this. It is blowing my socks off to the point where, you know, I was going to teach level two uh probably a month after we taught the first level one and we needed another a good few months integration time including myself <laughs> so it packs a punch sometimes i mean it is it's it's unconditional love is 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 pure power and the archangels are very loving but they're not always light and fluffy they they will they will uh shift you onto your 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 right path and timeline um pretty rapidly if they need to but it's 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 a very individual experience. Sometimes they're really soft with people and it's a gentle journey. I don't know why it is for me, but it always seems to be that they pull the rug out from under me and they hurtle me forward. <laughs> so but yeah, there's there's so much I could say about that frequency. That there's a lot of research in the book about music and sound. We talk a lot about the solfeggio tones, the binaural beats, and um also the work of the Heart Math Institute. And uh, Karen Newell does the um, a lot of work with sound. She's uh, Eben Alexander's partner, and she's a really interesting lady. So she talks a lot about sound that can be used for brainwave entrainment and healing. So there's a lot of research there in the book that talks about why sound and frequency is uh, really effective for healing. For people maybe that are new and say, well, you know, I, I've never, I don't think I could see, or I don't really feel anything. Can they start this process as well to become an um, archangel messenger? Absolutely. Absolutely. The book takes you on a bit of a journey. So I've included lots of exercises in here. And as I said, you don't need to be clairvoyant or clairaudient or anything. Everything starts with intention. So as long as your intention is loving and you set the intention that you're working with these healing processes, the angels will basically do the work for you. Uh, I have a lot of uh, information in here on how to develop those gifts and abilities, though. So really practical, simple, easy exercises to develop and build your clairvoyance, clairaudience, your clair even your claircognizance, that clear knowing, just you don't know how you know it, but you just know it. And I've included in here all of my channeling protocols. I have something called a channeling checklist. So this book really is a handbook of channeling as well. It will take you through all those protocols in a very simple, easy to follow fashion. It's really uh, easy to follow at home. And you can just take your time with it. You can read the whole book cover to cover. You can dip in and out. You can practice. Um, I'd like to at some point develop a journal that sits alongside it to help people so they have a, an accompanying journal that might have some questions and things in it. I'm just sort of talking about that at the moment because it really is an interactive thing. I mean, it's a there's a lot of information in it, but there's so many exercises and you can go as slow or as fast through those exercises as you'd like to. And I'm hoping at some point to do an audiobook version of it as well, because I think with some of the meditations, 
it's nice to hear them rather than sort of have to read them and try and follow them. Although if you do have the book and you, you're struggling to kind of read, I would suggest just read through it in your on the recorder on your phone and then play it back with your own voice so you can really delve into the processes. So what's the purpose of someone using the Archangel Alchemy? To me, it's about empowerment, really. You know, if, and the same with channeling, I I often say channeling is not a party trick. (laughs) And uh, this is for deep healing. This is to alchemize our lives so that we can live our best lives ever. Ultimately, so we can live our own unique individual version of heaven on the earth. This is a tool so that you can, you know, it's not a passive healing, really. It's an active healing. It's a little bit of both. You're working in co-creation. So you can use it as a general healing, even if you don't know what you want to focus on, or you can focus on a dedicated intention. And you can even do healing for a situation in your life. I was talking to my students just yesterday, and one of them's having a a tricky situation. And I said, well, just in the same way that we do healing on an individual or an animal, you can do healing on a place, you can do the healing on the whole planet. Or you can take an entire situation that you're dealing with, say you're at a crossroads in your life and you don't know which direction to take and you're feeling really confused and you're really struggling with the emotions. Take the whole situation and imagine you're putting it into that diamond healing chamber and ask for the highest and best outcome. And it will start to alchemize so that the crystalline energies start to reveal more and more truth about the situation to you so that you can find the best path forward. And I always say, you know, in my own personal practice, until I know, I don't know. So you don't have to make decisions until you are ready. You can set the pace. Uh, when it comes to channeling as well, channeling to me is it, it's such an empowering thing because it isn't about putting a being on a pedestal above us. You know, I'm, I also talk in the book about false light and the fact that there can be trickster spirits around. So I do talk about protection, discernment. These are vital keys in our spiritual path. But when you can learn to channel, you can receive information pretty much from anywhere because this whole universe is alive. And I see it as pure consciousness. You can have a conversation with the chair that you're sitting on if you want to, have a conversation with your car or your house. That might sound a bit harebrained but we're all connected through that web of light. The beautiful thing about channeling also is that if you have an injury or an ailment, you can tune into your body and actually talk to your organs. You can talk to your joints. You can ask them, what do you need? Why are you hurting? You know, what, how can I help you? So with everything being pure consciousness, conversations with our trapped emotions, for example, can help to alchemize why we're feeling the way that we're feeling. And I believe this will have great inroads into things like depression, anxiety, and things like that, helping us to move through those lower emotional vibrations and states so that we can come into more blissful states of awareness. We can really achieve what we want to achieve and go after our dreams. Although that said, you know, part of this healing is about integrating our human selves with our divine self so that we're living in flow so that our soul self is able to more effectively lead the way and our human self is able to trust our soul self to make the best decision. And I found this out the hard way because there's been a lot a lot of times in my life I've been trying to get certain doors to open and I've been hitting my head against these doors going, please, could I have this in my life? And eventually I realize, oh, that's not for me. That's not my path. But whenever a door stays closed to you, there will always be another door. And sometimes as humans, I find we can hold on to things a little too long if we, you know, and not realize that think, certain things are not for our highest good. But when I listen and I listen to my soul, I'm always guided in the direction that will bring me the most peace, the most happiness, the most fulfillment. And it's usually when I let go and I trust and I say, okay, put me where you need me, but please let my needs be met. And, and, you know, this isn't just about, you know, flying off with the fairies and being all spiritual and woo-woo. I I have a, a – this is all about bridging, again, heaven to earth, bridging the material world with the spiritual world. So my, one of my big intentions in this work is for our highest material physical pathway to bridge and merge with our highest spiritual awakened 
most blissful, most purposeful pathway. So as you're going through this, and I learned that the hard way because I was always like, okay, put me where you need me. But then I would go through these huge life collapses. I'd lose my job or my money or my security would go. And then I realized, oh, we're supposed to actually be living on this earth plane. <laughs> you know, we're supposed to have these these support things in place. We're not like the monks that would go and meditate on a mountain, although that's still very lovely. But, you know, to me, I'm here to walk, talk, eat, sleep, breathe, embody this work in a human form. And I'm still very much a human woman. You know, I still love going out to dinner. I like going shoe shopping. <laughs> you know, I think that um, I think that we've got a bit confused as a humanity as to what this non-attachment thing means. You know, you can be in the world as long as you're, and you can enjoy the the beauty of the world as long as you're not getting stuck in it. It's interesting how this all comes together. And I understand what you're, you're mentioning. You know, it's, of course, we like a lot of um, the finer things in life and just enjoying life, but not to be owned by them. Yes, exactly. And shoes are good for dancing in and dancing raises your vibration. So <laughs> <laughs> without a doubt. Well, and I know in your book, you talked about the angelic realm of light. What is that and what is it like? Well, to me, when I experience it, I can imagine myself flying up somewhere. You know, we, we, we've we often as a humanity been taught that heaven is up, but I believe that that's really just in vibrational terms. But actually, if you look up, you're looking up into your pineal gland, which actually is um, one of the, uh, the, the ways, that the, the gland that transmits the DMT that helps us to have vision. So that is also an activation. But to me, the angelic kingdom of light is all around us now, and we can just tune into it by tuning into our hearts and just inviting them to be with us. It is a it is a group consciousness. It is a um, an infinite group consciousness of all of the angelic frequencies. And some of you will be familiar with the angelic hierarchies of light, where you have, you know, obviously the thrones and the virtues and the dominions. But to me, this isn't a hierarchy as we would see it in linear human terms. They're just angels operating at different frequencies and vibrations that have different roles. So you have your everyday angels, you have your parking angels, as everyone knows. <laughs> um, you have all different angels for all different things. And the archangels really are kind of the heads of each of those orders. But they, to me, are the ones that are really here to oversee our ascension. And, you know, ascension and enlightenment and um Phrases like that can feel really big. They can almost feel really unattainable. But I think, again, it comes back to intention. I think it comes back to just living our heart's desires, living our truth, being the best person we can be, living from that vibration of unconditional love. And as long as we're using that as our rudder, as our steering wheel, we can't really go wrong. And, you know, I've also learned through my life that unconditional love isn't it's not the same as human kind of light, fluffy. It's not, it's not quite the same quality as human love, true love, compassionate love, those levels of love that we have. Unconditional love really is, it just is, it is that absolute sort of truth that cuts through anything that shouldn't be in our path for our highest good. And so when you align to unconditional love, Sometimes that means that you have to say no to people as well. You know, I really struggled with that for a long time. I thought that to be angelic and to be a good person, I had to be this people pleaser. And a lot of empaths, as we know, have that trouble. And, you know, I got tested on it quite a few times and, and had to really stand in my power and say no, say no to bullies, say no to people that were, if I didn't say no to them lovingly and, you know, with respect, sorry. I was going to end up hurting myself. So it's a it's a very powerful lesson. It's holding that that central point, that midpoint of balance where the two spheres cross and this takes us beyond duality. It really takes us into the realms of transcendence and that to me is where you know the evolution, enlightenment, ascension, ascension which kind of means to raise up, to rise up. It's about coming up above that level of duality by bridging both worlds and seeing things as they truly are through the eyes of unconditional love. And, you know, I kind of, I sit with it every day. I kind of think what would be 
what would be in, in integrity. If I ever have a, a big decision to make or a test on some of this, what I can do is I can use the Archangel Alchemy system, put myself in the diamond healing chamber, really bring in that diamond frequency aligned to my highest um, my highest soul self, my purpose, ask for the support of the angels and just ask to feel, see and know the whole truth of a situation. And often that would be, right, what would be in alignment with the highest good, the highest, what would be the right thing to do here, the, the, the thing that would be most in integrity and authenticity with harm to none. And from there, I can kind of see it playing out like a little a little vision or a little, um, you just get a knowing, you'll just get a knowing, often you'll feel it in your body. And I do go in, in the book, I teach you how to kind of body dows as well, how to tune into your own inner feeling awareness so that you can answer questions yes and no with both your body and your soul sometimes our mind can muddy the waters a little bit we can go too much into our mind and overthink things and worry about stuff but when we connect body to soul heaven to earth and we come into this energy of just what would the truth feel like what would what would it look like how would i know that divine right course of action, what would it feel like as a vibration in my body, then we have a way to direct our way forward because the vibration of the yes answer will always feel the most loving, the most light, the most easy, the most expansive and the most joyful. So I think that ascension, enlightenment and all of that is much simpler than we think. It really is just living in alignment with love, just living in accordance with love and asking yourself in every moment, you know, that 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 thing, isn't it? What would love do? It's that thing. It's what would what would I do if I was my most angelic divine self <laughs> having a human experience? <laughs> and that doesn't mean being a doormat. Absolutely not. No. And I learned that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a lesson we all go through. <laughs> you know, getting to this point where we're able to stand within our own personal power and yet be loving and kind. Absolutely. Absolutely. And forgiving ourselves, you know, for the times where we've had to do that, we've had to be stern or we've had to be firm. Kind of a kind of a dichotomy right there. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, and so as we look at our connection with the angels, let's start with this. I mean, do we have angelic consciousness in our body and does that help us with our communication with them? I love that question. For me, for my, my, uh, my viewpoint on this is 100% yes, we have angelic consciousness in our body. We are part of them and they are part of us. And as just as we are part of the divine and the divine is part of us. Um, if you were to have a, say it was symbolized by a triangle, and one of my teachers taught me this, and it was it actually originally came from Dan Winter, who's an amazing physicist, and um, I've also included some information about him in the book. Uh, but in really simple terms, if you had a, a triangle and one side or plane of the triangle represented the divine and the other side of the plane or triangle represented humanity, the angle would represent the angel. So the angel is the ratio or the relationship between us and the divine. That's what they represent, particularly archangels, because their names, it's fascinating this, even their names in the Hebrew, the phonetics of their names intone the energy of what they represent. So when you say Mikael, whose name basically means God is my strength or God is my protection or the will of God, the authority of God, you're actually invoking phonetically and through sound that energy of your own divine will, your own courage, your own inner Michael. But what happens when you do that, because it's multidimensional and it's holographic, is you are basically Michaeling, you're becoming that, that vibration of Michael, but he will also appear from a human uh, level as a guide, as a being around you. So it is both. They are within us and they are all around us. And there is actually a channeled message in the book that explains how that, that sort of goes some way to explain how that works. And it's a bit tricky to wrap your head around at first. The only way I can understand it really fully is because I've experienced it in that in those incredible embodied experiences 
where I was both, you know, looking at the angel from all angles and I was the angel. I was experiencing myself as the angel and also observing the angel. And I don't know any linear way of really explaining that except that what we do in the healing practice is we do that. So this is what the angels were showing me. They were showing me how to embody the angelic presence for the healing. So at a certain point in the healing, the angel, the archangel that you're working with will come in and merge in consciousness with you and you are literally embodying them. They're, they're standing in your energy field. You become the angel. And uh, it's actually really beautiful. And I didn't, at the time it first happened to me, I had no idea what they were showing me or why little old me was having this huge existential kind of uh, it, almost unable to be articulated, profound experience that was beyond the beyond. And uh, But actually, it was the technology they were showing me. It was exactly what they were preparing me to, uh, to bring through. So, yes, it, we, have them, we have them in our cells, in our very DNA. They are part of us and we are part of them. And, that, you know, it, there's also another analogy that many spiritual people use that I've written of in the book. And if we were to see the divine as a huge multifaceted diamond, each uh, angelic, uh, I guess, each of the uh, the qualities of those angels would be a different facet of that diamond, would be a different plane of that diamond, but also that diamond is us. It's our consciousness. So our own consciousness is that, that oneness of that divine consciousness. And so we are also facets on that diamond. So it's all one in the same, really. But they they offer us a different window to look out at the world through. You know, if we can look out at the world through the eyes of unconditional love, that is looking out at the world through the eyes of the angels. That is that is what the archangels are trying to, to show us. Please be more like us. Please, please embody our qualities and uh, and humanity will all rise together. You will all work together. You will you will start to integrate back into that oneness of that that divine uh, one consciousness but as individuals it's not about hurting us all together having one band-aid solution because we are unique individuals we each have our own qualities our own gifts our own abilities and it's why I don't really believe in one band-aid solution for everybody I think that um, what I love about this system is that everyone can use it and it is one process but it has so many different functions and so many different intentions and it will be it can be applied to whatever you're dealing with whether it be physical mental emotional spiritual um or all and above and like i said you can use it on a place i do it for i do a lot of angelic grid work where i'm sort of gui- i've been guided around the planet for many years to different sacred sites different ley lines um doing things like spirit release alchemizing the energies of those places clearing the old um the old memories that are held in some of those places reactivating temples i'm not the only one doing this work i know many other grid workers um but this can also be applied to grid work and it can also as i said be applied to a situation you know if you're watching the news we often feel really helpless as humans watching the news and seeing things play out like russia and the ukraine and what is happening in iran at the moment and and things like that even the pandemic and what you can do to to um, to actually do something so that you're not feeling helpless and you are actually assisting is recognize you are divine, recognize you do have the power to help change things, and put the whole situation within the diamond chamber. Call in the archangels, and what we do is we never we don't focus on what's wrong because we don't want to amplify what's wrong. What we do is with unconditional love, we see the whole situation as already healed, already resolved. Mostly we do that through our feelings. What would it feel like for that situation to have worked out in the best possible way? What if it was already healed and resolved and we let ourselves feel the relief and the gratitude and um, the love and the joy and the peace and the relief, actually, the release, you know, what would it feel like if that was already healed, if that was already complete, if that had already been resolved? And then we're not just passive bystanders in our life. Then we we really become powerful alchemists. 
and I'll, I've got a story actually the other day because my husband loves the football and he was watching a Tottenham game and he's quite 3D, my husband. He works in recruitment and he, he's he's actually really magical, but he, uh, he doesn't choose to uh, tap into it that often. But when he does, it's like, see, I told you. So he was watching the football and uh, Tottenham were not winning <laughs> and he was not best pleased. And I was like, Tone, you know, they're playing up the road because we live very close to Tottenham. We're in North London. They're literally playing up the road. You know that if you sit there and you go all doom and gloom and think they're going to lose, you're going to contribute to that energy. If you sit there and maybe ask the angels to let them score, they might just win. And then I had to come into my office because I was running a group on the Zoom. But as I came in, I heard him go, oh, my God, it worked. (laughs) And they'd literally scored right after he asked the angels to let them score. What would you like listeners and readers to take away from your book? I would like them to take away the knowledge that they are powerful, that they are divine, and that they are infinitely loved, and that they are never alone. One thing I've learned is that even in those moments when you are literally on your knees and you do not you don't have the answers, if you call on the angelic kingdom, and your higher self, you you allow yourself to acknowledge all the feelings and the emotions, however hard they feel, and you surrender it over, surrender over the outcome, you let go, and you stay in absolute trust. That's the key, that the secret weapon really is the absolute trust. And I always say to myself in those moments, even though I have no idea how I am going to get through this, I am staying in absolute trust and I am refusing to budge from the belief in love as a powerful force in this world. And this includes things in my personal life. It's included things I've seen on the news and it's included times when I've thought to myself, I don't know if I can survive this or I don't know. You know, I have I I have a job staying grounded because I have very supernatural experiences. I've always had very supernatural experiences and experiences that have not been able to be explained by doctors or experts in their fields. So I kind of have had to navigate life on this planet very alone a lot of the time. When you can really trust, when you can really surrender and trust, Eventually, what will happen is the answers will come. They always come. They may not come in the way that you hoped or the way that you think they would. But you see, we're here, we're expanding beyond the realm of logic. We're busting out of a very heavily um, masculine, rational programming and balancing back into the union of divine masculine and divine feminine, which is that oneness. You know, it isn't more of one than the other. As the goddess returns, this is about us really embracing our magic, our miracles, and our ability to harness those unknown realms, which we've often been taught to fear. You know, we've been taught to fear what we don't know or what we don't understand. But actually, an exercise I get my clients and my students to do is to imagine what if the unknown wasn't dark? Or what if you didn't see it as all darkness? What if the unknown was light and miracles? What if What if you didn't know what was happening around the corner in your life, but you had a feeling that it was something absolutely marvelous and amazing and the most miraculous thing ever? And then, you know, would you still be afraid of change if you knew that that change was going to be the best thing you ever could have imagined, you know? So it is all in our perception. And just with a slight change in our perception towards love, we can change our whole life and we can choose heaven on earth. You don't have to be super spiritual. You don't have to have incredible visions. You don't have to even see yourself as magical. But just know, just hold that intention that you are part of a bigger consciousness of divine love, having a human experience. And in every decision you make and in every step, know that you are a blessing on the earth and just walk on the earth as though you are an angel and blessings will open up in your life. Well, Alexandra, where can our listeners connect with you and be part of your community? 
Oh, thank you, Marianne. Um, I, I guess my website is the best place. It's just alexandrawenman.com. And uh, I also have a YouTube channel with there's lots of lovely interviews and sort of free information, some channelings on there as well. But if um, if anyone's interested in more about Archangel Alchemy or signing up to do the training, I guess the best thing to do is to sign up to my newsletter and I will always let people know the dates on there. Well, Alexandra, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Thank you so much for having me, Marianne. It's been an absolute honor and a pleasure. Well, thank you, Alexandra. It has been such an honor to spend this time with you and to talk about your new book, Archangel Alchemy Healing. We're going to pause here for a quick moment, and we'll be right back after these messages. I'd like to thank Jason Eastwood at Guitarfulness for sharing his inspiring music and talent with us. His music is known worldwide for cultivating atmospheres of harmony, inner peace, and clarity. Visit Jason's website at guitarfulness.com. Join his newsletter, be part of his community, and download his music. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne, where we make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work, and while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.